a roster full of support players. If training camp next year, I mean, is, is there somebody that's going to – is there somebody in the organization, is there somebody going to give that kid a run for his money uh, in training camp next year? And, um, you know, how, how safe and how protected will he be? Because, you know, because – is it because he's a draft – I mean, I think this is, to me, you know, compared to other – Draft and you know draft picks and and there's other reports out there. There's been huge stars that have started with teams and they've gone on to be Stanley Cup champions and captains of their team and everything else. And I get it and so on and so forth. Um, but for me, I just I just the kid just hasn't really impressed me. And I know people will say oh, he plays hard and he's you know whatever. But he's you know he's pretty much relegated to a fourth line player. And yes, I know he's a young kid and everything. But I don't see there's not enough. Uh, in, in most of the games here, in, in a lot of the runs, uh, any of the excitement, any of the offensive uh, uh, excitement that this team has produced, he hasn't been a part of it. He hasn't really um, – he ha- he's not really exciting me, Kevin, I guess is what it's getting around to. And, you know, hey, look, if the, ca- if the coach and the organization is having the patience with him, then I'll sit on the sides with my arms folded as, as long as it takes. And, and I know he's not the only guy on the team uh, that's not producing, but – you know, I just, I guess, I just wish there would have been a little more from him this year because of the ice time he's gotten, uh, because of the experience and everything else. And then there's also just the the situation where uh, there hasn't been any movement. They haven't tried to put him down in the farm system. They they haven't. He has. He's gotten a different look than say what Kratzoff went through and uh, you know what Anderson went through and so on and so forth. But I don't know. I, at this point, I'm throwing my hands up in the air. And if the Rangers are just going to let them ride the roster spot and not produce anything, and you know, there's a lot of guys that go out there and work hard, but he's an, he's you know he's an, he's a first round draft pick, and we're not seeing anything. Well, I think in the I mean, if if there's any positive signs, I mean, in the last the positive KD. Well, I mean, in the last four games, he does have nine shots on goal, which is good. Look, that's over two shots a game, which is more than he'd been doing previously. So he were they definitely... quality shots, Kevin? Were they quality well? They were. I mean, they were. They were against St. Louis. I mean, he had two golden chances to to score in that game, and uh, you know, he unfortunately couldn't couldn't find the back of the net. I mean, can't the kid, finish. His... Yeah, no. I mean, look, that's a problem. I mean, you can say he's finished. He's... See, he's finished. There you and go. He can't finish. Finish, but he can't finish. <laughs> but you know, it, it's been a problem. Um, you know, he's had some some chances, especially recently, and he hasn't been able to find the back of the net. Now you could say he's snake bit or whatever you want to say, but you know, look, fin- being able to finish is is part of your skill set. Um, and and you know, he's he's having trouble doing that. But you know, Buchnevich was having problems finishing earlier in the year, and now you know. He's been one of the team's better better plays of late um, as well. I mean, he's really and I, I gave him a little bit of props. He's really worked on his his two way game. I mean, the guy is so much better defensively now. He works hard in the corners. Um, <laughs> see how I'm deflecting from Kako, by the way. Yes, right now, I just going that. to another play. I, I, I think you noticed. I'm that, taking but. my notes here. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, look, we all what we all have to hope for for Kako is this: is that this year ends up being a huge learning experience for the guy. Uh, throw him, and throw, he throw him on the first line. Come on, cry this down. Throw him on the second line. They got nothing look, to lose, right, Kevin? Just throw him up top. Yeah, I mean, I I don't know if he necessarily deserves it. I don't care about deserving but, it. But just throw him up there. Maybe get some more chances. I I don't know what it is, but you know, you, everybody's talking about he's young, he's a good guy, he's a good player. That's fine and everything, but why throw him up there, man? Get right. him, get him up there. Yeah, look, I, I I I'm not gonna argue if that's the way Queen goes. If Queen just says, look. You're our guy. Let's go. It's time for you to step up. I'd have no problem with that. Go for it. That's what and I want. That's what I want. Okay. Hear. All right. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> you know what? When I when I put in my call to Gordon, like I do every day. Yes, please. <laughs> um, you know, for some reason, I'm never able to get through. Um, maybe I'll leave a message. You know, for Quinn to call me back, um, and then I'll go over that with him. All right. Thanks, buddy. Put in a good word for me. Appreciate it. And ask him, ask him to cut the beer prices down a little bit. That's it. <laughs> if he doesn't mind. That's it. You got to go back in the day. See, when I used to go to the games when I had season tickets with my buddies, I used to sneak a flask in 
was Jack Daniels, and I'd buy like the biggest Coke they had and just <laughs> dump the whole thing in. And that that was what I I would. I mean, I'd have like you know four or five beers on the way in, but and then I'd sneak the flask in, buy the three dollar Coke. Although the, I'm sure Cokes are like ten dollars now, but um, and that and that's how I was able to survive <laughs> the games. And then I'd get the big, you know. <laughs> 32 ounce Penn Station beer uh, for the ride on, the, on the way home for the ride home. You can't and that even was, do that now, I don't think. And those things are cheap. I, you know, you would buy a, a beer in the game. You get like, uh, you know, the 16 ounce beer at the garden for whatever it is, like 15 bucks or whatever it was. It's probably more than that now. I, no, but it's, four, um, four, it's 14 for a White Claw, buddy. Oh, that's that's criminal. Uh, I could buy a 12 pack for that anyway. <laughs> But, you know, you're paying whatever, you know, the $15 for the beer. And then you go and you get that, like, 32 answer down in Penn Station. It was, like, five bucks. Yep. <laughs> uh, good old days. Well, you know, all of us Long Island Rangers fans, uh, <laughs> you know, we were professionals at that. I mean, you'd grab your, you know, six or 12-pack on the right in. You know, you get a little juice to, you know, before you even get into the Penn that, Station. Well, that's our that's our tailgate. That's our tailgate. If there's yeah, no parking lot to tailgate it. It's tailgating <laughs> on the Long Island Railroad. Uh-huh. You know, and everybody, everybody's sitting. Everybody's got their Ranger jerseys on, and they're like six pack between their legs. Or you know, I remember going in once. These guys just had a bottle of vodka. There was like six of them. They were just <laughs> passing it around the whole, tra- the whole ride into the station. Um, so yeah, good stuff, I mean, man. Time. Yeah, those are good times. Absolutely good times. Few headaches, uh, but it's all good. All good. Mm-hmm. Train ride was always longer though when they lost. <laughs> uh. But oh, anyway. that train! That train ride home is a disaster. Everybody's <laughs> packed, like you said, especially when they lose. He's just like just, smelling. Sweaty. Oh, just uh. get me the hell home! Just please get me home as as soon as possible. And back then, we didn't have our iPhones and our headphones to you know disappear into. You know. Yeah. Well, right. we we had you know you had to sit there and talk to your friends about how miserable <laughs> a freaking game it was. Yeah, we could barely <laughs> put three words together by the time we got on that train. We're slurring our words. I, well, that's true too. I mean, you're really just sitting there on the train trying to keep each other awake from passing out so you don't miss your spot and end up in Babylon with a stupid conductor's kicking your seat like, hey. <laughs> and they didn't have the bathrooms on the trains back then either. It was brutal. <laughs> <laughs> You young millennials, <laughs> you don't know how good you have it. Your bathrooms. <laughs> it's me and you, two old Ranger fans, talking to the young Ranger fans today. You don't know what it was like. <laughs> oh, man. Good stuff. All right, KD. Well, I mean, um, do, are we going to do a man crush? I mean, uh, these these three games, do you have uh, uh, anybody that stands out for you amongst these three games, these three losses? Capo Caco. Oh, he's got <laughs> He's Stop coming out of it. Um, um, let me play the music. He, We're getting out of here. What? He's coming at it. Well, it's definitely not Georgiev. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> uh, come on. You, you got to give it to Mika, man. Come on. No, nah, I'm going to give it to Kreider because, you know, and I feel bad for the guy. He's had just such a tremendous season, and just to see that happen to him. You know, and, and we were riding so sky high. I'm sure he feels terrible. He wants to get back oh, out there yeah. as soon as possible. Bank so, account is look, never if, gonna be empty for the rest of his life, and you're feeling sorry for him. Yeah, what do you want from me? <laughs> Go on. I, I I rudely interrupted with my snarkiness. Go on about your Chris Kreider. You are the you are chief of Rangers hospitality. Go ahead. No, I'm done. That's it. I, I, I'm offended now. I don't, yeah, I'm, not, I'm done. End the show. I'm done. Bye, folks. Uh, too <laughs> no, no, you can't say goodbye <laughs> to the folks until I tell you to say goodbye <laughs> to the folks. <laughs> All right, buddy. Big game against the Caps tomorrow. Jersey. And then we head out west next week. So uh, buckle up. We'll see what happens. And we'll try and stay positive here in, in, in Rangers land. Well, yeah, if one, if one thing, you know, <laughs> we're just going to drag this thing on, this show on. <laughs> If there is one thing, this this group has absolutely been resilient this year. Whenever you thought this team was okay, here comes the tailspin, they've never really gone into it. So and and they've been fighting in these third periods, even in the in the flyer game the other night. You know they scored those two late third period goals. So this team is always fighting. I mean they're always going to be fighting hard. There's going to be no give up. They're going to play to the to the final second of the final game. So you know I'm not worried about that at all so you know i think that that's definitely a positive sign that this team can turn it around because 
They they, they have, uh, and I and I give kudos to Quinn on that, and the entire coaching staff for you know this team's resiliency, this team's hunger. Um, that you know they can definitely turn it around at any point. They've shown it all year. Um, so there you go. There's my positivity go, positivity going into the week. You know, I feel good that this time next week we're going to be pretty pumped again and 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 potentially, you know, in a playoff spot or, or you know, two points out or one point out in a week. There's my prediction. Let's That's go. That's good stuff. That's good stuff, man. Hey, look, they played really good against the Blues, man. I was proud of them. So it's a good sign. I think you nailed it, man. They they uh, As long as they keep turning things around and they bounce back and they show you that, that they're still going to fight, it's all good to me too. So um, we'll stay positive you know, here, KD. You know what? You know what? The, actually, you know what the Blues game reminds me of. Again, I'm just going to prolong this episode, Paul. This is going to be like a three-hour episode. I'm just going to keep talking. What is everybody in your home away? So you got, <laughs> you got nobody to talk no, to. <laughs> no, no, actually, what it is is my family is here. I don't want to go back to them. Um, <laughs> um, you know what the, the St. Louis game reminds me remember the Rangers went out west and they had the, the Edmonton, Calgary and Vancouver game and, and the Edmonton and Calgary game were just awful like a blown out we're like season's over you know just get rid of everybody but they had that Vancouver game where we're like you know what they lost but they played real well and, and from that game on that was in the what was it, the first game after the new year and that's when they went on their hot streak. So I'm hopeful that the Blues game the other night is is going to be reminiscent of the Canucks game where you were like, you know what? They played real well in that game, and that's a good sign going forward. So there you go, Paul. It's some more positivity. Let's end. Let's end this the right way. All right, man. How do you think about like? How do you feel about that? I think you need to have another White Claw. That's what <laughs> I think. <laughs> I think I've had too many. Is the problem. Oh, man. It's all good, man. We continue. We move on. We love the team. It's all good stuff. All right, KD. Say goodbye to the folks. Bye, folks. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks again for tuning in to Go Rangers Radio. We'll be back next week. Get those caps small. Let's get back into the win calm. It's all good stuff. Thank you so much for tuning in as always. Tell the world iTunes, Spotify. Thanks again so much for listening. And as always, let's go, Rangers!